A story that spans billions of years, a tale of everything. This is the story of the universe, how it went from being fractions of an inch in size to what we know today. And where is it headed? In this video, we will celebrate the wonder and beauty of the universe. We will travel to distant galaxies, marvel at the birth of stars, and we will ponder our place within it. A cosmic story, how did our universe begin and where is it headed? The Big Bang is generally accepted as the theory of how the universe came to be. But unlike the name suggests, it was not an almighty explosion, but the appearance of space everywhere in the universe. The universe is an incredibly vast and mysterious place. It is estimated to contain over 100 billion galaxies, each containing billions or even trillions of stars. And yet, all of this began from a single point, 13.8 billion years ago. All the matter, space, and even time were crammed into this tiny speck, a singularity that was unbelievably dense and hot. Think of it as the universe being a pea-sized dot. Just imagine blowing up a balloon. At first, the balloon is small, and all the points on it are close together. When you inflate it, everything on its surface moves farther apart. That's a simple way to picture how the universe suddenly ballooned out faster than the speed of light in a burst of cosmic inflation. Alan Guth, a physicist, came up with this mind-bending idea in 1980. During this first second after the universe burst into being, temperatures were scalding, around 10 billion degrees Fahrenheit. And in that blistering heat, a stew of fundamental particles like electrons, protons, and neutrons began to form. Imagine this stew as a cosmic soup, where not even light could traverse as light particles, or photons, were just bouncing around like crazy. After about 380,000 years, this chaotic soup finally settled down. A period called recombination followed where the earliest nuclei captured electrons and formed stable atoms. Now that most of the electrons were contained in atoms, the cosmic fog lifted. Light could finally zip through the universe without getting scattered all over the place. The formation of these atoms also produced light. This light is what we now know as the Cosmic Microwave Background CMB, kind of like the universe's baby pictures. Funny enough, this was first predicted back in 1948 by Ralph Alpher and others, but it took almost 20 years for scientists to stumble upon it, completely by accident. This discovery was so groundbreaking it catapulted the science of cosmology into mainstream recognition. After this initial awakening of the universe, everything fell into a 200 million year long dark age. An absence of stars or any cosmic entity emitting light, the universe at this time was just a giant, dark ocean of hydrogen and helium atoms and small amounts of heavy elements. Approximately 400 million years post the Big Bang, the universe started emerging from its dark phase. Like the initial few million years were so tiring, the universe needed a nap. This era in cosmic history is termed the Age of Reionization. Previously believed to have spanned over half a billion years, recent observations suggest this transformative phase might have unfolded more swiftly than earlier assumed. In this span, gas aggregates compressed sufficiently to give birth to the earliest stars and galaxies. The intense ultraviolet light they radiated purged and disintegrated the majority of the neighboring neutral hydrogen gas, this reionization process, combined with the dispersal of the hazy hydrogen gas, made the universe permeable to ultraviolet light for the very first time. Over time, the ultraviolet light from these stars decomposed hydrogen atoms in the gas, ionizing them into individual electrons and protons. As this ionization process continued, starlight reached greater distances, ionizing an increasing number of hydrogen atoms. By the universe's one billionth birthday, stars and galaxies had converted almost all of this gas, resulting in the universe's transparency to light, as we observe today. Imagine this, about nine billion years after the universe's first epic act, the Big Bang, our solar system threw a birth party. Now, it's a sprightly 4.6 billion years young, and here's the fun part. Our sun, the ultimate spotlight, is just one of the staggering 100 billion stars dancing in the Milky Way's grand cosmic ballroom, swirling about 25,000 light-years from the galaxy's bustling core. The universe's potential fades. 
What's going to happen to the universe? It's a cliffhanger of cosmic proportions. There are a few theories floating around about how the universe might meet its end, or not. The Big Freeze First up is the Big Freeze, which is as chilly as it sounds. Imagine all the stars and galaxies running out of energy and cooling down. It's like the universe's version of turning off the lights and calling it a night. Forever. The Big Crunch Next, we have the Big Crunch. This is like the universe doing a U-turn. If there's enough mass, gravity could reverse the expansion, pulling everything back into a single point. It's as if the universe says, I changed my mind, let's go back to how we started. The Big Rip Picture this. The expansion of the universe becomes so extreme that it tears everything apart, right down to atoms. It's like the universe hitting the self-destruct button in a dramatic cosmic finale. However, as scientists get better at measuring things like the mass of the universe and the rate of its expansion, we'll get closer to knowing which of these scenarios is most likely. There's even a chance we'll discover something entirely new. But what we do know for sure, long before any of these fates befall the universe, our sun would have entered its red giant phase and consumed Earth and all its inhabitants, if there are any. Now, some of you must be wondering, what existed before the Big Bang? Science hits a wall when we try to probe the time before the Big Bang. Current theories of physics essentially break down at that singularity, leaving us in a murky realm of speculation. It's like trying to look over a fence that's just too tall. Surely there's something on the other side, it can't just be nothing, can it? But what, exactly? Well, that's where philosophy and theology swoop in with their capes on, much like they did during early humanity's attempts to understand the universe and natural phenomena. We have various takes on this, each fascinating in its own right. Some philosophers argue that the universe has always been around. It's eternal. No beginning, no end. Just an infinite stretch of cosmic time. It's mind-boggling, I know, but it's one way to sidestep the question of origins. Religious minds often have a different take. For example, the Christian doctrine of creatio ex nihilo posits that God created the universe out of absolutely nothing. In a way, it's a comforting thought. The universe didn't have to struggle through some cosmic adolescence to become what it is. It was purposefully created. Now, let me tell you more about the concept of creation ex nihilo. Creation ex nihilo is a term that comes loaded with theological weight. It asserts that the universe was created from scratch, so to speak, by a divine being. Now, this idea contrasts sharply with the philosophical idea of ex nihilo nihil fit, which means nothing comes from nothing. According to this view, everything that exists was formed from something that was already there, kind of like cosmic recycling. When we go back to ancient myths and cosmologies, they often portray the universe as being formed from some primordial pre-existing substance. Whether it's the dark ocean of chaos in Sumerian myth, or the interplay of Apsu and Tiamat in Babylonian lore, these ancient narratives seldom start with nothing. The Christian perspective, particularly as interpreted through the lens of the book of Genesis, adds another layer to the conversation. The opening sentence of Genesis is open to multiple interpretations. Some argue that it describes a universe that already contained raw, formless matter that God then shaped. Others believe it supports a genuine ex nihilo creation. But what about other traditions? There are beliefs in cyclic or oscillating universes, universes that expand and contract in a never-ending cycle, each time sparked by a new Big Bang. Just imagine the universe breathing in and out in cosmic cycles. The questions around the universe's origins, its purpose, and its destiny have baffled human minds for as long as we've been able to look up at the stars. Philosophers and scientists have been scratching their heads over this one for centuries. Some say, God did it. Others shrug and say, it just does, no reason at all. And then there are those who suggest that the universe pulled a magic trick and created itself. Yes. You heard that right. Through a complex causality loop or backward causation, the universe might have just been its own Houdini. If the universe did, in fact, cause itself to exist, it adds a whole new layer to the age-old debate between theism and atheism. Now, does the universe have a destiny? Everyone wants to know the end game here? Are we hurtling towards a big freeze, big crunch, or maybe a big rip? 
I can almost hear the dramatic music in the background. Different people have different takes on this. Some envision an end that follows the natural laws of thermodynamics, leading to a heat death. While others wonder if the universe might just be playing an infinite game of ping pong with itself. Expanding, contracting, and then starting anew. You'd think with all the telescopes and equations we have, we'd be closer to an answer. But the truth is, we're still at the best guess stage. The universe keeps its cards close to its chest. The universe is more than what we can imagine. It's so big that our minds can't really grasp it, and so mysterious that we're still not sure why it exists or where it's going. But isn't that uncertainty part of what makes it so fascinating? The vastness of space, the twinkle of distant galaxies, and the ever-present cosmic background noise. They all serve as a reminder of how much we don't know. However, just because the universe might not have a predetermined destiny doesn't mean our lives lack meaning. Quite the opposite, it makes every connection we form, every discovery we make, and every sunset we watch that much more significant. We get to define our purpose, even if the universe is still figuring out its own. So, how's that for a trek through the philosophical cosmos? Leave your thoughts in the comments below, and if you found this exploration of cosmic questions as enthralling as a supernova, make sure to subscribe.